A big thank you to NordVPN for sponsoring this video. Formula One right now has a bit of a problem. You see, since Liberty Media took over the day-to-day -day running of the sport back in 2017, their main ambition has been more than clear, to make as much money as possible and to make the sport more American. By the start of the 2023 season, this initial target was well on its way to completion. Miami had just joined the F1 calendar the year prior, with Vegas soon on the way to make it three US races on the schedule. Shows like Drive to Survive and the downfall of particular non-Americans had boosted fan interest to an all-time high. US fans, US tracks, and a US-based team. There was just one thing missing and Williams had supposedly found it. Logan Sargent's announcement as F1's latest recruit came with tempered expectations. Would he follow in the footsteps of the likes of George Russell and Alex Albon as drivers who flourished at the growth-based team? Or would he be another Latifi? I sure seem to think the former, which should have been an early indication of what came next. Cut to September 2023 and the F1 US boom appears to have stalled a little bit. Now, while some of this is likely down to a certain Dutch driver winning basically everything, its latest mascot being a magnet for the tyre wall probably hasn't helped much either. Logan Sargent's rookie season has been a baptism of fire, so let's break down why. Before we get into that, I've got something very special for you all. A sponsored segment about a thing that I actually use, and something you can too with the link in the description. I've had NordVPN installed on my phone and computer since my trip abroad to the Hungarian Grand Prix earlier in the year. You see, when you're browsing on public Wi-Fi networks, you never really know who else is keeping an eye on you. That's where Nord come in. Their VPN encrypts your data, preventing anyone untoward taking a peek. It's not just for staring at Gotifi memes. What do you think I was going to say, you filthy animals? As well as keeping your data safe and secure, Nord helps block advertising as well as ransom and malware, keeping your devices safe from attacks and the good-looking single ladies in your area. And if that sure sounds like a disappointment, you're a Formula 1 fan. The girlfriend's a long way off, so get real. You can try out NordVPN for yourself using the link on screen and down in the description below. There's a 30-day money-back guarantee if it's not for you, so there's literally zero risk in giving it a go. Now back into ripping F1 drivers a new one, so this is usually the point where I would go over Sargent's junior career. However, since I covered that already in my video one year ago, and I can't be asked to research it again, let's just jump to the 2023 season. Williams entered that year cautiously optimistic. The team had been rebuilding around Alex Albon, who, having been released from Helmut Marco's sex dungeon, was thriving in his new environment. With a new team principal in the form of James Vowles, positivity was in the air, though the outfit had to be realistic. It was Williams, after all. The calendar opened with the Bahrain Grand Prix, and as a rookie, the goal for Sargent was simply to get to the finish line, and that he did in a respectable P12, albeit a lap down and a fair way behind his teammate in P10. The most impressive thing about Logan's debut for me, though, lied with qualifying, where he narrowly missed out on getting into Q2 and was just two tenths back from the more experienced Albon. That wasn't the same story in Saudi Arabia, however. Now, we've got to take into account here that the Jeddah circuit is far from the most forgiving when it comes to inducting rookies into the sport. I mean, just ask Mick Schumacher, for example. That said, Logan not being able to hook together even one clean lap in Q1 was a bit of an early concern, though on the bright side, he did at least make it through the race unscathed. And after all, it was only his second Grand Prix. There still weren't any major worries. And then we got to Australia, where for the first time, Logan was encountering an all-new venue. Sargent started off his weekend by out-qualifying a Red Bull, too bad it was Checo Perez, so that didn't mean much at the end of the day. In fact, the American's quality performance left a lot to be desired. P18 and 6 tenths of his teammate in Q1, with Albon going on to put his Williams P8 on the grid for Sunday. However, let's just remember that famous saying, to finish first, first you have to finish, and that was something Albon wasn't very good at at the beginning of 2023. A race of attrition put Sargent 15th when a late red flag bunched the pack together for a restart with just a handful of laps to go. With all the chaos that proceeded to unfold, Logan would have been in a prime position to score some big points for the Williams team, had he remembered what breaks were, that is. Now I want to go back to something I said in that original Sargent video, 
and arguably the one thing that has aged well out of that hot mess. The fact that Logan isn't the greatest driver when it comes to being put under pressure. Throughout his F2 career, the moment an F1 seat was mentioned, Logan seems set on finding it anywhere but the racing line. The American performs best when the eyes were elsewhere, which admittedly was what they were in Bahrain. We were far more invested in Oscar Piastri and Nick de Vries. Now Logan was starting to make a name for himself and not a great one. This was emphasised when he crashed out of the first sprint quality of the year in Azerbaijan, an incident that made Williams decide it was best for Logan to sit out of the sprint whilst they searched down the back of the sofa for the remaining Latifi money they had stashed away. Come Miami, Logan had closed the gap to his teammate in qualifying, though this didn't stop him making up the back of the grid for that race. To make matters worse, despite being the home hero, Logan got about as much support from the fans as Michael Massey would if he showed up to Brackley one day. After an equally underwhelming result in the race, F1 headed to Monaco, though to begin with, it was Albon making the mistakes again. Sargent would instead match his best qualifying performance of the season, starting P16, though being quickly bullied out the way by Hülkenberg at the start, the German deciding he identified as a V2 rocket that Sunday afternoon. A mistake when the rain came down later on summed up yet another disappointing weekend, and as every race went by, it just looked like Logan was getting worse. The quality deficit kept increasing, with the American 1.4 seconds behind Albon come Canada in a performance so lackluster his own car committed seppuku just to put everyone else out of their misery. Questions were now being asked over Sargent's future with the team, though these paddock rumours were being drowned out by fellow rookie Nick de Vries' turmoil over at Alpha Tauri. As this came to a climax at the British Grand Prix, Logan, with the eyes off him now, found some speed, getting out of Q1 for the first time in his career. P14 on the grid turned into P11 in the race, and with points now seemingly on the horizon, maybe Logan had found his form. Yeah, well, not quite. The Williams car wasn't great in Hungary, and with the field, bar Verstappen of course, close together, Logan's typical 3 tenth deficit was the difference between P16 and P20 on Saturday. Grand Prix Sunday would see both cars work their way up the field, only for the American to decide that he much preferred the very back of the grid after a spin with just a handful of laps to go. Logan would then one-up this with yet another crash in practice for the next round in Belgium, and after trailing Albon yet again, the summer break really couldn't come soon enough. The sergeant we saw when the sport returned, however, appeared to have a new spring in his step, and with Zanvor presenting an out-of-the-blue opportunity for points with the Williams team, Logan seized it with both hands. Q1, easily through. Q2, easily through. Q3, in the wall. It was all going so well. Peaton on the grid, though, was still a good place to start, a circuit not known for high volumes of overtakes. Guess it was just Logan's luck then that the following Grand Prix broke the record for the most on-track passes in history, which would have mattered had he not thrown it into the barrier again early into the afternoon. Still, it looked as if the Zanvoort weekend might have been a turning point for Logan, and whilst initially another Q2 appearance in the next round at Monza seemed to confirm this, the gap to Albon was just getting bigger and bigger. By Singapore and the latest round at Suzuka, Logan's form has just continued to degrade, which is great for us when we need an extra safety car to spice up the action, though not particularly great for the Williams team, who seem to have a car that can break into the points consistently this year. Japan's qualifying crash and the subsequent assassination of Valtteri Bottas in the race seem to confirm Sargent's back to his mistake death cycle that we saw earlier in the year, and in fairness, back in his F2 days when he threw away the chance at the title, the moment his name was linked to that Williams drive. Logan's arrival in Formula 1 was meant to signify two things, the arrival of an American driver that actually had some potential, and a driver that the new American fans could rally behind. And whilst as a Brit I can't quite ascertain the true effectiveness of that second point, he doesn't appear to have succeeded at either from where I stand. Yet despite this, all signs currently point to the team retaining the American services for 2024, which begs the obvious question, why? Well, to begin with, this is still a driver in his rookie season, and as most content creators on this platform will tell you, you won't be able to get the full picture until they're at least halfway through year two. Logan as well is a previous Williams Jr. driver, someone who the team have placed quite a lot of money into, and to let him go after just 12 months would not just be seen as a waste of investment, but a major failure as far as the team are concerned. Can Logan turn it around? 
Honestly, who knows? The cynic in me says a big fat no right now, but think about what we said about this man's teammate a few years ago. Things can change, and if Logan can get comfortable in Formula 1, maybe the results will show themselves. Though that's easier said than done. Anyway, what do you think? Is Sergeant done in Formula 1, or does he deserve more time to grow in that Williams seat? Let me know down in the comments section. A big thank you to NordVPN for sponsoring this video. And once again, don't forget to check them out using the link in this video's description. And of course, a massive thank you to my patrons and channel members as well. They get some of my videos early, so if you're interested in that, then the relevant links are also down there for you as well. I'll be back soon with another video, but until then, have a good one.